welcome back to Chemisode on chromatography. This is part three of chromatography, and it's how to use chromatography in a quantitative manner. So how to construct a calibration curve based on some data that's been given to you in a chromatogram. Um, heads up, we've got some different apps here that you can download from the iTunes App Store. Um, let's move into how to use chromatography in a quality, sorry, quantitative manner. So, what I've told you before is that we have the area under a peak in high-performance um, liquid chromatography on gas chromatography is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution. So, um, what you have is a, a direct correspondence, a linear relationship between um, concentration and the area under a graph. What that means is that if you have a graph or a, <coughs> a graph with a line through it, you can actually use um, that graph to tell you what an unknown sample is if you get the area of it. So what we create is known as a calibration curve that can be drawn using a set of standard solutions of known concentrations. So what you first do is we actually make up so say we're trying to analyze ethanol in um, a alcoholic beverage, which some of you may have done in Melbourne University. Um, what we do is we make up sets of standard solutions of known concentrations. So we might add up, make up a solution of 10 milligrams per liter ethanol and 25 milligrams per liter ethanol, 40 milligrams per liter ethanol, 70 milligrams per liter ethanol. We run these on a grass chromatogram or a high-performance liquid chromatography machine, and we get the area of these guys. We then run our unknown sample. So then we run the, the mixture of ethanol and water, the wine or something that we are looking at by itself and work out what that is. We then make a curve so we can find out what this unknown is. To make the curve, we plot up what our um, area is here on the y-axis, and our concentrations on our x-axis. Okay, so along this x-axis, I've got our concentrations of 10 milligram, the 25 milligram, and these are our dots here. I mark those off and I draw a trend line through those points. I start up my first one, which is obviously a zero, zero. So if I have no ethanol, I have no area. And then I run through to the top one here. <coughs> Excuse me. This gives me a trend line, which I can then use to find my unknown. I have an area of 40,392, so I'll work out whereabouts that is. It's about here. I then go down to what my concentration is at this area, which happens to be around about 34 milligrams per litre. Okay? That's how I can use a calibration curve to determine my unknown, and how I can get quantitative analysis from a chromatogram. It's a basic idea, it's a pretty simple concept, and that's how you do it. If you have a computer program, it's even better because what you can do is bash these in and get a um, trend line out as well. If you right-click on that trend line, what you can do is actually find the exact um, equation for this trend line, if it's a linear equation. And then you can actually get exactly what your um, concentration is here. You just put your value of y in, and you solve for x. That's if you know how to do that. Um, if you play around with Excel, you can get quite good at making these trend lines and getting this as well. But for VCE purposes, plotting a, um, your points, drawing a trend line and reading off the graph gives you a pretty accurate idea of what your actual sample will be as well. So that's how you can do qualitative pro analysis using high performance liquid chromatography and gas chromatography. A couple of things you need to be aware of. If you do your analysis, so if you create your um, calibration curve and your unknown is well off the scale, so if it's, if I, for instance, had um, 111,000 for my area, I couldn't use that on this calibration curve. I can't extrapolate my calibration curve. It might it might not be linear after this way here. So if we had something like that, what you would need to do is then dilute your unknown and then run the sample again and bring it back to something that comes within your calibration curve here. 
you can't run or you can't have a calibration curve or you can't use it if your unknown is outside the regions of your calibration curve. It just doesn't work. Okay, so that's quantitative analysis using chromatography, construction of a calibration curve. You'll use this as well in spectroscopy. So it's a handy thing to do, handy thing to know. Key summary, keyword summary for all of chromatography. So I'll look back on the last three videos that I've made. You should know how to explain what each of these words mean and where you might use them. So you've got stationary phase, mobile phase, normal phase, reverse phase. Actually, we haven't covered this much at all. Um, never mind about these two, but everything else you should be able to explain. TLC, thin layer chromatography. HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography. GC, gas chromatography. Calibration curve, what we've just done here. Moving forward. Your sample, what is your sample? What is silica? You should know that it's aluminium oxide, so Al2O3. Polarity, solubility, what both of these mean in terms of chromatography. You should be able to identify the polarity or how polar, a degree of polarity, a certain compound is based on its structure. You should know that long chains are less polar than short chains in terms of your hydrocarbons. RF and RT values, you should know where those are used. Retention times, elute, what that word means. You should be able to use it in a sentence as well. So if you're explaining colon chromatography, HPLC, or gas chromatography, you should be able to use this word elute when you're explaining it. And the origin, what does the origin mean in terms of your um, TLC and your paper chromatography? You shouldn't be able to use those words in your answers. Okay, that is all for chromatography. That's three videos down. Um, I think I'm pretty much done. The only thing I need to talk about and the only other video I think I need to make for Unit 3 is about um, simple spectroscopy. So your atomic absorption spectroscopy and your UV vis spectroscopy. Other than that, I think we're pretty much done with chemistry videos. I'll, um, if you have any questions, queries, theories about things, please let me know. Um, my email will come up at the end of this. So, yeah. Alrighty. Um, I'll talk to you again, well, next time I make a video. Take it easy. See ya.